courses in hypnosis and use lots of art therapies as well. <laughs> Been in practice for 17 years now and training people for about 15 years in all kinds of therapies. So I was going to call this talk today Seven Secrets of the Unconscious Mind. I just decided to call it Secrets of the Unconscious Mind. Because uh, for some people, seven's a lucky number. Yes, right. And it's uh, a day of betting today. Oh, yes, Grand of course it is, yeah. And all that. So yeah. um, I didn't want to influence Did it. Did you have a flutter? <laughs> but a flutter? Mm -hmm. I'll have one of the Gigi's. No, I've never been on a horse. No, I didn't. I was going on, I didn't in the end. Didn't have time. Oh. Well, you can have one in your mind. Yeah, that's Just true. Imagine that's having true. one now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I could, actually. Yes. Because you've probably got the same odds of winning. That's true. <laughs> so, um, let me explain a bit about why I talk. The secrets of the unconscious mind. Now, for some people, the unconscious has been a place of uh, negativity and uh, a place where all the horrid things happen and things that we don't understand, things that happen outside of awareness. My experience of the unconscious mind is, is it's actually a place of beauty and it's where our imagination comes from. And that's where our imagination is grown out of the unconscious mind. So who would like to have a, a way of just being able to connect with a friend who can be there for them at any one time they need? Who'd be interested in something like that? Hands up. Who'd be interested in having a friend that's there for them anytime they want? And who would actually want to have someone there for them who's almost like a servant who, in a respectful way, you could say, this is what I want you to do, I'd like you to do this, and they would just go ahead and do that. Who would like that? But is that a good thing? Absolutely. Okay. And who would then also want to be able to just, in a certain sense, be able to change any behaviours, any patterns, oh, yes. in any way yeah. that they... Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Good. So you're all in the right place then. So I'll tell you a little bit about the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. Your conscious mind is whatever you're aware of right now. So if you're aware of my voice, that's what you're consciously engaged in. And your unconscious mind is whatever you're not aware of right now. So if I say to you, how's your big toe feeling? How's your little toe feeling? Is it warm, cool, tingling? You become aware of them sensations, haven't you? And the thing is, is that's because I've directed your conscious mind to those unconscious sensations because they are going on all the time outside of conscious awareness. And the thing is, is that's because your conscious mind can only focus on so much at any one time. Your conscious mind can be easily overloaded and distracted by the sounds outside and things like that, sounds of traffic and other movements in the room can all be a distraction for the conscious mind because it can only cope with so much but your unconscious mind can deal with over two million bits of information every second yeah yeah it's been measured so research says that your unconscious can deal with two million bits of information per second so consciously you can only deal with seven plus or minus two bits of information at any one time so just think of what your phone number is backwards for a moment what your phone number is backwards, you know, that overloads, that's right, you have to do it on your fingers or have a go at doing it in your head. That's right, it's very difficult to do because it overloads your conscious mind. Yeah. And your unconscious is actually dealing with 
all the things that are occurring within you right now, it's dealing with your respiration, it's dealing with digestion, it's dealing with you hearing and translating information that's hitting the optic nerve going all the way back to um, the dorsal stream which runs around the back of the head here and asks questions like how, when, where, what shape is it, what, where, what relation is it to me, what size is it, which is then translated into other information through the limbic system, which is where we get to have feelings, and it's best to have good feelings, isn't it, than other feelings. So if we can actually ask the unconscious to make changes in how it organises and asks those questions in the first place, with an almost conscious volition, it becomes our servant, because it is already. It's just how you communicate, because one famous hypnotherapist once said that uh, my patients are patients due to a lack of rapport between the conscious and the unconscious. So when there's communication between the conscious mind and the unconscious mind, it's almost as though you're working wholly on your problem and integrating everything that you have in you, all the resources you have, and uh, that's a joy to experience. So your conscious mind works very logically, wants to work sequentially on matters, and wants to order things. Your unconscious mind works on things simultaneously and works in an irrational way, or so the conscious mind says. The thing is, is that it's just that they speak another language. Your unconscious speaks the language of imagination and symbol. And that's why when they have that phrase, a picture paints a thousand words. That's because we understand that visual imagery we receive through imagery can have all kinds of meanings. Just like when you imagine a tree. For some people that means certain things. You can take them back to times of childhood and happy memories of climbing a tree or just sitting under a tree and enjoying sheltering from the sun on a sunny day. It can cause all kinds of associations just when you think of a tree. The other thing is, is if I say don't think of a blue tree, do not think of a blue tree, do not see a blue tree. I've just seen one. Yeah, and that's because you're I'm standing unconscious. Standing where you are. <laughs> yeah, probably with its limbs extended. Yes, it is, yes. Yeah. Bright blue it is. And smiling, <laughs> probably. So, certain branches of hypnotherapy have made the connections that uh, the unconscious mind doesn't process knots. So one of the ways of setting up good communication between the conscious and the unconscious is by understanding that if you ask for what you don't want, that is what you'll get. So it's best to ask for what you do want. It's like going into a restaurant and you say to the waiter, oh I don't want this, I don't want that, I don't want that, I don't want this, and I don't want that, I don't want that, I don't want that. It's much quicker to say this is what I want. And then the unconscious mind knows what to give you. Because if people say, for instance, and they come to me and say, I want to stop smoking, I don't want to smoke, the unconscious mind is only hearing smoke, smoke, smoke. So sometimes it's best to put the attention somewhere else, on something much more benign that will give you a greater feeling, and that way you can get to find your own piece of seven on earth and be successful in a way that... Uh, adds to the quality of fight that you have. So before you know it, you might experience freedom to be that someone who's knowing something's occurring consciously, and you're unconsciously you're receiving other messages. Because your unconscious is always picking up the messages that are being passed on. So imagine what it would be like when you get that connection between
between the conscious and the unconscious, and they're really working together wholly for your benefit. Because really, one of the secrets of the unconscious mind, one of the secrets of the unconscious is, is that it actually wants you to do well. It wants you to be alive. Imagine when you're learning to walk. You know, you have to go through this whole transition of learning even how to be in this position and then there's a whole organisation of muscles to get to this position and then you have to learn how to balance your weight and then somehow learn how to push yourself up and organise all these muscles so you get to the point where you can stand but then you know a lot of children just fall on their bum. Now they fall on their backside because the unconscious knows that's a way of keeping themselves safe. Most children, when you see them growing up and learning to walk, they fall on their bum. Occasionally they have like a little accident somewhere else, grazed knees or a little knock on their head. But there's this drive within us that wants to keep us safe. That really does want us to uh, learn. Now, if parents were to see a child do that and just say, oh, that child has fallen over, it'll never walk. Already negative exactly. So the unconscious knows that it's seen people walking around achieving things, therefore it's possible. So I'm going to make that happen. So the unconscious learns how to coordinate muscles from your feet, the inner ear, where you hear things with your inner ear, and also all these other muscles until you can stand and then walk. So that all of that is a complicated process. Like when I lift my arm, there's 214 muscles between here and here. Between the wrist and the shoulder, 214 muscles. To lift that arm consciously, I don't know how to do that. I really don't. I can only lift it unconsciously because I have to know how to send the right neurological information at 48 kilometers per second down the right receptor. Because the unconscious mind has already got so much habit there that uh, you know it just will want to do all the usual things. Most people get up every morning and do exactly the same things in exactly the same way every day due to the habits that we've created. And uh, driving, those of you that drive, you know, you, you learn to drive, and that's an unconscious process. Because when you first learn, it's the anxiety provoking because you've got to learn how to hold a wheel, or you've got to learn to do different things with your feet, pay attention to what's in front of you, and taking all that information and negotiate these objects all at the same time. And at first people find that very stressful, and then it's a habit, you can do it, you can achieve it. And then you drive unconsciously, which is uh, an unusual.